Welcome to Smack Talk. As always, a link down below in the description box to credit WWE. And of course, I got my cheat sheet right up there. A couple of notes that I write down. Really not ashamed of having to do that. In case I forget something. So the show opens up with Paul Heyman. And the gray hair thing was really, really funny. Uh, because in recent memory, he's had gray hair. Some people thought he was just aging really quick all of a sudden. Whatever the case was. Now he's dyeing his hair to hide the gray, or did he dye the hair gray to make himself look older and more stressed out? Either which way doesn't matter, <laughs> but I really loved uh, what L.A. Knight said to him, which I, I forget exactly what it was he said about, I'll, I'll hit you so hard the gray hair will come back or something like that. It was just a great all-around promo, uh, because in two weeks' time, see, it's a good thing I got that cheat sheet there, two weeks' time at Crown Jewel, we are going to have L.A. Knight versus Roman Reigns in Saudi Arabia, which is going to be amazing. No offense, and, and I mean this with all due respect, I love LA Knight so much. It is ridiculous how on board I am with this guy. I just don't see it being a potential... It's like, listen, if Cody Rhodes wasn't able to finish his story, you think LA Knight's going to do it? That's what I'm saying. Not saying he doesn't deserve it. I truly believe he deserves it. Now that he's in his 40s, he's getting older. I truly believe he has all the tools to be a champion. When? For how long? I don't know. That's a discussion perhaps for another day in another video. Moving on. Montez Ford defeats Santos Escobar. And this was really cool. Really enjoyed uh, the match there. I really hate when there's like distractions and stuff like that. It really gets annoying. Earlier on, right before the match, we had seen backstage Street Profits getting ready with Bobby Lashley with for their match. Oh, and as they came out, I like mentioning again, just because it's really interesting, this little extra piece of detail that Bobby Lashley again shook hands with a couple of fans. Logan Paul did the same thing. It is rare in this era, and I kind of feel like, again, to narrate what I've said before, Logan Paul kind of revolutionized that you could be a heel but you're always going to have a fan. Bad guys always have fans. They're bad fans. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so to me, that was kind of cool because just because you're playing the heel, don't forget, kayfabe, it's dead. I get it. But it's really cool to see. I'm happy to see such a small detail like that. Didn't really like, again, the distraction, like I said, because Montez wins again with a distraction, and then they were beaten on, on him. And uh, Santos, that is. Yes, I momentarily forgot his name. <laughs> and then Carlito came out, which was cool. And the reason it was so cool to see Carlito, other than the obvious that I'm a huge, huge freaking fan of Carlito, and I've always been a fan of Carlito, is the fact that the more I get to see him, or that we all get to see him, the more it looks like he might actually really be around. And he's a part of the LWO He's a good guy this time around. He's a face. He's with Rey Mysterio, who came out again looking like Batman with his mask. But that that was really cool. The, just the whole thing to me, again, had the E in WWE. Oh, and backstage, again, see, I even wrote the note here. Rey looking like Batman with the mask and Carlito and the rest of LWO were there as well. So again, just every time we get two, three seconds of Carlito, especially if it happens multiple times in a night now, uh, and for the past couple of weeks, it looks like we may just see him be a full-blown competitor for uh, some time. Oh, no, I'm not ready for that piece of information yet. Uh, what do we got? John Cena. No, that, that we can't already be there, can we? can we? Can we already be there? Oh, yes, we can be there. Okay, so first I got to talk about the vignette. This is why my notes again, very important. So Pretty Deadly had a vignette that was playing. And again, if you click on the link down below, you could probably find it somewhere uh, where that occurred. So Pretty Deadly had a vignette where they were getting like a pedicure and they getting, you know, the treatment. And it kind of looked like they were like at some resort of some sort. But then they ended up getting attacked by the brawling brutes. It's just the whole thing again. It just, it was funny, but it was cool. I enjoyed it. I was sold on it by even how Pretty Deadly spoke, you know, like their disposition or whatever, just the way they talk. 
uh, sometimes I'm, I'm not buying it, even from people that I may not be big fans of, and I'm not huge fans of them. I'm rooting for them. Okay? Because as people, I love them. But again, I'm very picky with who's my favorite team or who do I just like in general. But they're, they are definitely growing on me. They're no fashion police. I've said that a million times, and I'm sticking to that story. But whatever. Whatever. Then backstage, we had Jimmy Uso coming in. Hey, what's up? And then, and then don't ask me what that was. And Solo wouldn't shake his hand because he's all like... Yeah, see, I couldn't play Solo's role. I can't I can't be taken seriously. And he was just basically bragging about uh, him being the reason that Cody and uh, Jay lost the title. I almost said Jimmy. Can't do that. Then John Cena came out. The GOAT, as he's referred to by the announcer. Very warm reception in which John Cena thanked the WWE Universe for that reception, saying, you know, you still got it. The thank you chance. It was, it was really... It was really nice. It warmed my heart because the guy just works so hard. And I think it's come to a point now where people know he is near the end, like forever. And he's not going to be around for much longer for his contract, which is like 20 episodes of SmackDown or whatever it was. And I think people are just like, look, you know what? Thanks, man. Because he gave a lot to the business. Yeah, he might not be able to fly around like I almost said, Bruce Lee, like Dragon Lee <laughs> or Rey Mysterio, the five moves of doom. Uh, but yeah, it's, it was just so nice to see. And then he was talking to us, wasn't he? About how I didn't realize this 2002 days since he's won a single televised match. His last win was in 2018. That was half a decade ago. And then he basically was like, anybody that comes out here is crazy. And then solo comes out and Jimmy came out to ambush Cena, but then Jay Uso came out to take out Jimmy. Bad Jimmy. Remember little Jimmy with our truth Not the same Jimmy, obviously. I'm just trying to be funny. It doesn't always work, but I try. I was hoping LA Knight was going to come out because the whole camaraderie between LA Knight and John Cena, which I've really been enjoying. And, uh... Yeah. Got distracted there for a second. Why do people... Nobody ever texts me. Like, no, like nobody texts me. But then I record for 10 minutes and everybody's texting me. Well, it's the same person. But anyways, multiple texts. I keep getting the beep notification. So I'm trying to make it sound like I'm popular, but I'm not. All right. Backstage, Nick Aldis. That was pretty wild what happened there backstage. Yeah, we're not there yet. You got to talk about a very important backstage scenario here because Jay Uso came to crash the party. Heaven forbid. Nick Aldis, the GM of SmackDown, had Adam Pierce and Jay Uso escorted out of the building. I'm like, wow. And then Adam Pierce leaving is like, you know what? Oh, it's on now. And I was just like, oh, snap, Adam Pierce versus Nick Aldis. That would be so cool. This was interesting again. So I've said this before. I've said it a million times. And I'm going to say it again. Logan Paul rubs, not literally now, don't get, don't get too excited, rubs me in an interesting way. It's so hard. It's impossible for me not to respect what the guy can do. He can really hang in there. A YouTuber that did some stuff. Okay, we all know what he did. With the Pokemon thing and the, and the Force. That, like, okay. And, and just overall, goofball, him and his brother. There's no doubt they're athletic, self-made millionaires. I'm never going to be 1% of what these fuckers are. I'm, I'm not. I, I can admit that. But there's no jealousy. I mean, I'm, I'm envious. I mean, I'm jealous of the bank account. But anyways. No, the guy's got it. He, he's... Like, he's good. There's there's no doubt about it. And we see Batman there. I'm going to have to talk to him about that later. Oh, because the mask it doesn't have all those neon colors. It literally looks like the fucking Batman. Anyways, he came out, shook a hand, shook a hand. Because he does that. Like Bobby Lashley now. He's taking a page out of Logan Paul's playbook. Takes a few jabs at a couple of people. Talking about Rey Mysterio and the U.S. Championship. So then Rey again comes out. 
and basically says, you know what? Crown Jewel. You and me. U.S. title. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I really, really, really want... I, I, I never thought in a million years I'd say this, but listen. Rey Mysterio doesn't exactly have the rest of his life, you know, to be wrestling. Because he's, um, okay, he's getting up there. He's almost 50. 50. I would be okay. Oh, and they shook hands, if, if you couldn't tell. I, I put it in the note. Oh, yeah, and they shook hands, and there was no funny business on Logan Paul's part. I'd be okay if Logan Paul won the title. I'm just, I'm just being real. I'm, I'm, I'm being 100% real. But I'd also be equally okay with some kind of inner turmoil with the LWO. But at the same time, that gets very old fast. We don't always have to have drama going on within a faction. Okay. I can't wait to see that match because these guys can really move. And it was crazy to see how small Ray is compared to Logan. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller defeat Dragon Lee and Cameron Grimes. Interesting duo again. I think they've got history of being friends. They're all just really good in the ring. This was like a great match. It was good. It was good. And then Michael Cole was like, despite how they won, I was like, well, it's not like there was really a lot of distraction in that one. It really wasn't all that bad overall at all. Like it just, it was just a good match and I enjoyed it. We had a quick interview, which again, you can actually see right here. It's two minutes long, two minutes and 19 seconds of just, uh, you know, that girl there. I, I forget her name, the girl that's backstage. Uh, I always get their names um, mixed up. And uh, basically just quick little interview with Kevin Owens. It was really nice sharing his thoughts about how it was, you know, growing up in the business with Sami Zayn having lost the titles, not really feeling like they really had a proper rematch. And now they're just completely split because Jey Uso uh, is now on Monday Night Raw. It was just nice to hear for a couple of minutes. And he was also saying, but now that I'm here, it's new ground. There are people he's never wrestled. He's like, listen, before I retire, and I want to see it because this guy can fucking go. He's never wrestled Rey Mysterio. Hell, he's never wrestled Sheamus, for example. I'd love to see Sheamus and Kevin Owens go at it. I was sure they've gone at it before. Guess they didn't. Then we had um, the women's champion, Io, defeating Charlotte Flair. I, I'm just, I've said this before, and, okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I think. It's what you think. I cannot, for the life of me, is my thing done all right? No, it's not. I was like, what? I've been dogging that long. I can't stand damage control. Don't don't like him. Don't give a shit about him. But I love... Well, I don't know about that angle. But I love EO Sky. And I love Charlotte. It was a really, really solid match. This was, if I remember correctly, this was the main event. And I felt like this week, this was like really good. Because in recent history, in recent memory, I had made... Some comments that, and I love Charlotte. Like, oh my God, okay? Charlotte fanboy here and her dad and all that. Uh, but she had a few off matches, and people can have an off night. I don't remember that ref. What the hell is he doing there? Should have been me. But uh, a couple times she had some matches that just felt like she wasn't either putting enough effort in or maybe she was sick. Or sometimes the synergy, again, with another person. Like I said, the magic that like Vince McMahon Stone Cold had, or the magic that like Shawn Michaels and Bret the Hitman Hart had, you're not always going to have that kind of, of synergy between two people. You could be the best wrestler in the world. The two of you could be the best, okay? And come together. But if that chemistry, that's the word I was looking for, is not there, you're not going to get a five-star match. You're just not going to get it. But this one was really solid. I really, really enjoyed this. And I'm I'm talking as if I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. Okay? I'm not surprised. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. But Bailey, god damn, you pissed me off. And then what we ended up happening... What we ended up happening... What we ended up having happen... That's a cool shot. And I love Bianca. I really do. She came back to help out uh, Charlotte. She was getting uh, teamed up on. I almost said gangbang, but that mm, wouldn't pr probably have gone too well. And yet, here I am, I still said it. 
And Bianca came to the hair thing and all that. And, and it's going to make me sound like a complete ass. She's amazing in the ring. She's super strong. She is just amazing. Like in that ring, just so goddamn good. But there's some people, and I'm not saying I'm good, but they're not that great on the mic sometimes. Sometimes you got to be like Solo Sokoa and just not really say much. And I feel like sometimes when she does that whole thing with, with, with the hair and the weird dance, I, okay, I get it. It's her thing. Uh, it, it kind of drives me crazy. And, and I've heard a lot of people say the same thing, but they were afraid to admit it. It's okay to criticize and critique little things that just drive you crazy. Like Bailey drives me absolutely up the walls. With the way she rambles, she's just not good on the mic. She's just not, and that's okay. That's okay. Neither is she, and I'm glad that we didn't hear from her. We saw her. I was all up for that. We didn't hear her. I have a feeling... We're going too soon now that she's back. Because I think she had a legit injury. A legit injury. I don't remember if it was scripted or not. Because we have a couple of people out with scripted injuries and then real injuries. Sometimes I just have a hard time keeping up with all the lies. Which ones are real, which ones aren't. Either which way, she's back. And I am. I am happy to see her. Maybe she could KOD Nia Jax. I would pay to see that shit. I'm just saying, because Nia Jax... Ugh. But yeah, Charlotte, Rhea, those are some of my favorite. Again, and in the ring, oh yeah, Bianca is really, really good. I just wanted to make that clear, because sometimes people message me, and hey, you're so critical and such and such a person. Like, I'm allowed to critique, right? Can't like everybody on the same level from an entertainment standpoint. And I think... That brings us to the end of this video. So again, as always, if you like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Oh, there's the interaction with Nick Aldis, like I said, if you want to see that. Um, the Kevin Owens interview. Like, it's all it's all here. Like, you can, you can see all the highlights and stuff like that. Thumbs up again if you like the video. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. You'll get a Solo Sokoa thumb right in the derriere. And we'll break that off in your ass. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, I mean, naturally, that would be great. I mean, this is what I do. I talk about uh, all things wrestling. Uh, I could talk about AEW. I've done a few videos on them, and I usually keep them under the, like, the storytelling. I'll probably never do a, a show, and that's with no disrespect, just because I don't have time. I only have time to cover NXT. But truth be told, if it makes you feel better, if I had extra time to cover more shows to watch... It wouldn't be NXT. I would divide it and I would go to AEW because I do try to skim through it, keep up with the storyline and all that sort of stuff. But with everything else I got going on, my other channels, playing guitar, working out, trying to become relevant, make more money, more and more money uh, so I can survive better. It's hard. And NXT, with all due respect, is just not my priority. If anything, I would be more willing to cover an AEW uh, show before I do that to kind of spread it out. I'm a fanboy of wrestling. Yes, WWE is my Diet Pepsi. WWE Diet Pepsi. However, if there is no Diet Pepsi and I have to drink a regular Coke, I'll do it. It's not like it's, you know, terrible. It's not too good for the diabetes, but I'll drink it. Same thing with AEW. It's a great show. I really enjoy it. And that's the end of that. As always... I think I've already said this. Whatever. Take care. Let me know down below what you think. That helps with the algorithm. That's the ulterior motive. But legitimately, I do care to see what people think, to, to chime in. Even if you just say, hey, pumpkin head, egg head. Doesn't matter. You look like a, a white eggplant. It doesn't matter. You're doing something. It's it's helping. It's engagement. It's uh, It pushes this up to the top of the list so that I can come up before BDE assemble macho team who am i kidding that's never gonna happen but i can dream i can dream sometimes dreams do come true i don't think mine ever will <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky if my daydreams will come true but uh whatever i enjoy the shit out of what i do so that is very important until next time bye for now